Hello everyone, welcome to our uh, seven episode of OpenStack and uh, Beyond. Today is February 3rd, uh, 2016, and we'll be focusing on ecosystem and tooling, contributing code, building projects in OpenStack community, and also all the consideration involved. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, my co-host, um, Arthur Brenzen. Hey guys. And um, uh, I'd like also to start with a quick introduction. So who want to start uh, from the panelists here? Uh, Bill? Bill, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Gal Sagi, uh, open source software architect working for the uh, Huawei European Research Center. Uh, I'm focusing mainly on uh, networking and containers, uh, mostly on OpenStack, uh, working 100% uh, open source with the community and uh, trying to push uh, several uh, projects in OpenStack uh, to enhance networking and containers and the way we deploy uh, and work with them. Excellent. Thanks very much. Next in line is uh, Ilan. Hi, uh, so I'm Ilan Rabinovich. I run the, uh, I lead the uh, community and evangelism teams at, at Datadog, working with our open source community. Uh, and in my past lives, I was an OpenStack, uh, op OpenStack administrator and user at, at Uyala, where I ran a number of data centers on, on OpenStack. Okay. So last is uh, Bill. Hi, uh, I'm Bill Mew. I'm the, the CMO at Compare the Cloud. Um, we are commentators on the market and active uh, bloggers and advocates cloud and everything And your IBM veteran uh, uh, who has spent years working on uh, channel strategies and um, looking at the uh, ecosystems. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um... I think that uh, we got here a fairly interesting topic uh, that I think uh, the entire OpenStack community is kind of uh, been struggling around for a while here. Uh, I think if I look at the history of OpenStack, we started with uh, everything uh, needs to be OpenStack native, and we had uh, you know kind of different projects, including uh, Pass. And as soon as uh, those projects started to touch on many areas, people started to ask, uh, what is the core of OpenStack? what's not core in OpenStack, where should it go? And then um, then came the initiative of OpenTent, uh, which kind of uh, opened up OpenStack to, uh, to a less, if you, if you like, a strict structure of contribution. Uh, I'd like to start uh, first maybe uh, with Gal here. Uh, what do you think is the, uh, the rationale behind uh, the Big Tent initiative? Uh, well, not it to me. Uh, the main rationale uh, is basically to allow different uh, innovation in the same area of interest uh, while uh, keeping uh, and supporting uh, free choice for the user. So uh, instead of, uh, I think, limiting uh, new projects uh, that overlap with certain functionality, which is something that uh, uh, we saw previously, uh, we are now, uh, OpenStack is now welcoming different implementation of the same uh, area uh, as long as they operate uh, in the OpenStack way and the OpenStack rules of uh, doing things. Um, if, if I'm trying to consider if this is working or not, uh, in my opinion, it's the right direction, uh, but it demands a certain maturity uh, from the community because uh, there is a there is a, a line between uh, you know different innovation and allowing it and allowing all of these projects uh, on one side uh, and over complicating things for the users and deployers because uh, you have so many options in the other side. So I think uh, the technical committee and the new project creators needs to be responsible and try uh, to work together where it makes uh, sense. Uh, but I think overall this is a good direction and I'm happy to see all the various different uh, innovations in that area. Excellent. So maybe Arthur you could touch on again uh, what was the history of what we had before we actually democratize uh, the, uh, the OpenStack community and uh, then let's uh, 
Dr. Beal and touch on the area that uh, I think I'll mention. Uh, are we complicating things or is it working? Right. So. So initially, when, when OpenStack started, uh, it was um, uh, mostly around the actual the core virtualization functionalities, and, and that kick-started uh, the Nova project. So initially, uh, all the projects were, were basically structured around the, the core virtualization uh, functionalities that Nova provided, and, and you know suddenly we need security, so let's, let's create a project uh, called Keystone, and then create a project called Glance for, for providing images, etc. So uh, and based on that structure and that uh, that way of collaborating, basically uh, basically mandated that that uh, same or similar uh, areas of interests uh, had to be contributed to the same existing <coughs> project, uh, and that basically introduced some some, uh, some limitations where where basically uh, you had multiple uh, groups of 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 of, uh, of uh, developers seeing. Uh, you know, seeing a lot of rationale in solving the same problem in a completely different way, and I think you know one key example really that we see that we see emerging uh, in the past I think year or so is obviously containers, where it doesn't necessarily make sense to you know, just introduce a new container driver for for Nova. Rather, it probably would make sense to have a new project for container management uh, around OpenStack, uh, but still you know the core functionality there would be to run to actually handle the runtime of the application itself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bill, uh, I think I'll touched on an important point here, which is a trade-off between being uh, open or democratizing the the, the, uh, the process in which projects can be introduced, uh, which would yeah, I, I uh, governance to complexity. What do you think about that? I think the maturity point that he made is very valid. Um, the OpenStack community is definitely maturing and it is refining the way that it makes um, progress and innovation, but unfortunately the OpenStack community isn't operating uh, in a vacuum. Um, it is up against um, a, a, competitor's, a competitive platform such as AWS where uh, there is uh, no need to, to organize by committee in the way that the OpenStack community is doing. And um, you're looking at um, the growth rate um, in AWS, you're looking at Azure uh, making rapid innovations, launching its own uh, uh, stack into the market to enable hybrid environments. Um, well, uh, the maturity that OpenStack is showing now and the program that it's making is admirable. Um, uh, there has to be questions made about uh, uh, the progress and the speed at which it is innovating in comparison to some of the other platforms out there. I see. So basically, I think the two examples that, or three examples that you mentioned, uh, if I take AWS, uh, Azure, and OpenStack, what you're basically saying is that the, uh, the result is that despite the openness of OpenStack, uh, actually the dictatorship in the in these uh, examples are advancing faster than the democracy. Uh, in this it, it, it is always difficult to organize by committee. If you, if you have to have agreement, if you're constantly needing to have checks and balances in terms of coordination, then, then that is obviously going to be a, an added layer of complexity. The problem on top of that, however, is the fact that for every uh, particular uh, uh, amount of effort put into uh, collaboration, each one of the players in OpenStack is competing with each other within the OpenStack market, and therefore you have a, a duopoly between uh, different objectives, either to collaborate to move the whole platform forward, and also to innovate to uh, differentiate themselves within the OpenStack community in terms of what they're offering. Um, and this leads to uh, less of a focus. Now, uh, uh, for all the fact that most of us buy into the open uh, uh, source idea, buy into the principles here, um, if one were to decide the most rapid uh, uh, means of innovating and reaching an objective, it possibly wouldn't be uh, uh, by committee. Got it. Uh, so you're basically saying that there needs to be another level of changes in the structure itself to uh, to allow OpenStack to be uh, to move faster uh, than the structure that it is right now, and OpenTent, even though it's uh, in the right direction, it's still not. Uh, it's, it doesn't solve the problem yet of the speed of innovation because of the lack of structure. I think uh, happens in the other example, which I think used some sort of a dictatorship model to 
Yeah. I'm not advocating dictatorship within an organization. I just don't think it'd work. And I think the open tent approach is a vast improvement of what uh, on what went before. So mm -hmm. maybe a question to the group. Uh, so what, so having said that, that uh, basically the open tent approach uh, happened only not due to internal competition between between uh, internal uh, participants with the, within OpenStack, but also from pressure from from external uh, technologies such as uh, Azure, uh, AWS, etc. So uh, so I think like what what are your stance? What do what do you guys think uh, with regards to? Uh, to what would happen within those clouds? Would you, do you think like the open stack, the open net tent uh, approach would affect also the external uh, public, uh, the, the additional public cloud providers? Uh, so they will be would would also allow a similar model internally to to have internal services touch touch pointing similar services but doing a bit different implementation. So do you think other uh, other groups would would allow such such cases? It's not whether they would allow such cases, they're just different structures. And I think one of the most telling changes that we've seen in the, the last year has been HP's change from uh, uh, initially being one of the main champions of OpenStack and a player in the um, public cloud to then withdraw from public cloud. It is still very much a, a part of the whole OpenStack consortium, but it has gone to Azure as its breakout public cloud alternative. And, and that is very telling. It is a, almost an acceptance by one of the uh, uh, core members of the OpenStack community that maybe in the public cloud environment, OpenStack hasn't made the necessary progress. And that is why it has reached out and is coll collaborating with Azure. Interesting. Uh, now, uh, a question here to Elon. Uh, with regard to kind of twisting uh, back to what Dal mentioned and kind of uh, focusing back on uh, the, uh, the OpenStack uh, ecosystem itself, does the uh, marketplace uh, solve or helps to solve the problem of uh, uh, that uh, that Dal mentioned? That you know, there's the fact that we have many tools for the same problem. The fact that we have uh, many options to solve the same problem uh, makes it difficult, but uh, maybe with the marketplace uh, we can put things in order and see which one is good or not based on popularity and other things like we have in the App Store model. Uh, is that a solution for that problem? Is that work? You know, I, I think it's, I think the, the uh, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, you know, as a... Uh, uh, as, as somebody as somebody that's more of an administrator of, of OpenStack uh, and, and and now somebody that's building you know monitoring tools around OpenStack, um, it I think I think what will what what solves what's what we'll start to see solve this problem is 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 more um, you know is is more something like the Linux distribution model that we see right. There's very folks there, there. I mean there are folks out there that are spinning their own Linux distros and they're starting from scratch, <laughs> but most folks are grabbing RHEL or CentOS or Debian or some other you know certified uh, grouping of technologies that uh, that somebody has already gone through, tested and QA'd and vetted as being a, a an integrated set that that works well together. Um, and I, I think it's a similar case. I think it's I think it's something we're we're gonna. We're see, we're already seeing this, you know, to some extent, the open set community. We're going to see even, uh, you know, even more of. There's just so many options as you're trying to figure out. I mean, just within, and if regardless of, you know, what we're talking about, do you run something at the project level, like you know, Neutron versus, you know, uh, you know, versus Nova Network? I mean, just looking at like something like load balancers as a service. Do I use the F5 load balancing backend, or do I use HA proxy, or do I use a Netscaler, and how, what what which of all of these things works best together? Uh, and that's where I think turning to you know turning to folks like HP, turning to folks like Red Hat, you know Canonical, whomever, um, who've already tested all of these pieces together, know what works well. I, I think that's where where we're going to see some of these problems solved, rather than the upstream up, upstream project. Um, the upstream projects I think are going to stay as flexible as they are right now, just because there's so many competing um, interests in you know in in that space, as as Bill was mentioning earlier. People just have different directions they want to go. Yeah, so if I summarize that, uh, I think what I think the, all of you are saying is that, uh, one, the open tent uh, democratized the, uh, the process of introducing new projects, even competing one, which is uh, generally a good thing. And it does also add the complexity in terms of the fact that we have now a more, more than one option 
to to uh, to the same, if you like, problem, uh, and that uh, potentially makes things a little bit more complex. There are a couple of ways in which I've seen the OpenStack uh, trying to address that. Uh, I think you mentioned, Dylan, uh, one of them, which is the uh, the, the distro themselves. Uh, so the vendors that uh, consume the uh, the upstream. Uh, have the responsibility to uh, choose the tools that they think would fit best to their uh, to their customers and uh, provide the guaranteed support. And by doing so, they're making choices uh, on behalf of their users uh, and bets, obviously. Uh, other tools there, I think, trying to put order uh, through uh, more, if you like, uh, uh, collaborative uh, choice, which is the marketplace. And uh, I think there is a uh, there is also, I've seen, uh, uh, a way in which uh, the OpenStack itself rates its projects uh, based on a maturity level and uh, progress. So I think you have better view on certain projects, at least, on uh, on their maturity and, and how to choose them. So I think with the combination of all uh, of all those things, uh, we're, we're getting in the right direction. There is still the challenge uh, that I think Bill mentioned, <coughs> Uh, that having said so, uh, we're still not at the same speed as the public cloud uh, environment because of that uh, governance model, uh, uh, and uh, and that's uh, that's something that I think still needs to be there to uh, maybe uh, sort out the the way uh, decisions are being made to uh, make OpenStack uh, simpler from from uh, from the level of variety that it provides right now. Uh, so let's move to the uh, to the next question. Um, it's uh, basically if we look at uh, the the project within OpenStack, uh, and, when, and and now we have more of them. Is there kind of a a clear case that you would say, and that's uh, that would be a question to Gal, that that project shouldn't be part of OpenStack? Uh, well, it's it's a difficult question. Um, because personally, I'm I'm very very favor in favor of um, richness and strong ecosystem, uh, and against blocking uh, innovation. Uh, I think that uh, every project that we see in OpenStack is uh, basically uh, kept coming from a real user uh, need or some sort of a company offering. Uh, to enhance the way that we we use the cloud now, uh, at least that's what uh, I hope. Um, so um, I think that the critical point here is that it's our responsibility as a community, and I think uh, both you and Bill mentioned it earlier. If we want to move uh, fast and uh, and try to uh, I don't want to say compete, but try to uh, offer the same offerings that public clouds are offering right now. We need to combine and centralize efforts where it makes sense. Uh, so we need to remember that every project uh, that is an official OpenStack project represent it, and we should strive to think work together, solve as many uh, common use cases and many uh, problems that we could from different uh, companies for different deployers and for different users uh, together and that what will uh, help us innovate and move uh, faster so, so basically OpenStack uh, as we had, as I just mentioned earlier was started to solve the, the public uh, the private cloud uh, problem basically you know the build an infrastructure for, for basically uh, enterprises and companies uh, to create some to create some sort of a uh, cloud environments and uh, either for, for themselves or, or used publicly and that was basically the the goal for for the openstack project now um, that was you know a uh, long uh, long time ago and since then we've also heard a lot of uh, a lot of uh, intentions a lot of you know uh, claims to to actually make OpenStack not not you know just a cloud uh, not just a cloud offering rather uh, make it a community uh, of integration of multiple technologies and projects and provide uh, standard uh, standard APIs uh, 
for those integration integration points between those technologies. So, would you agree that 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 would be the mission statement currently for OpenStack, or do you agree that uh, this is the right approach for OpenStack? I think so far uh, there's been a massive focus on functionality in every one of those projects and addressing what you describe as the client needs and what has been driving the entire project has been foremost. Unfortunately, functionality has been driven forward at the expense of usability and uh, it's, it's no joke that um, you possibly need to be a rocket scientist actually to get OpenStack to work across the board um, and, and it is that complexity that OpenStack has yet to uh, conquer, um, and, and that is what has held it back, and that is why um, companies such as HP have struggled to make uh, uh, the progress that they wanted with uh, using OpenStack, and that is why there are so many um, OpenStack instances that are still stuck in proof of concept, uh, and there are so many people arguing that it, whether or not it is enterprise ready, when maybe of the public cloud or, or, or alternatives, nobody would argue that they aren't um, enterprise ready. Um, uh, and, and OpenStack needs to overcome that usability challenge. So basically what you're saying is that, that the, the first priority for the community is to make sure that, that OpenStack is, is, is uh, the user experience of it would be uh, improved rather than announcing it as an integration project and basically allowing uh, different uh, types of, of, of community vendors or community contributors um, um, adding more and more complexity into yeah. into the into, into uh, the project itself. Uh, that that is you, you you can't necessarily have both at the same time. The more functionality that you bolt on and bolt on and bolt on, without necessarily ha providing the, the the simplification for the usability side of things, uh, the more of a challenge it is. And there is a real skills challenge out there. And um, uh, if you have the right OpenStack skills, that's great. You're you're mass in massive demand, but there's a shortage of those skills. Um, and actually, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, DevOps environment, many of the, the um, uh, 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 people are moving away from OpenStack because of its com complexity, and they are flocking to uh, the, the AWS pl uh, S platform, the AWS marketplace, because they can get things on a platform that's enterprise ready, and they can uh, the the speed at which they can spin they can spin up different services is just so much so much better. Uh, yeah, I think. Come back to that, Bill, uh, because I think that uh, maybe uh, the answer to that would be the distro themselves that supposedly provide the same, uh, su supposedly provide the same level of, uh, if you like, uh, uh, choices. But you like to say that they're not there yet, uh, and I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, a question to Milan here, in terms of the right approach to that uh, and the right approach to uh, to the democracy. It's actually for Elon and Galvin. Uh, there are still many tools that are not part of OpenStack, but are fairly popular by OpenStack users. Uh, I mentioned a few of them, Cloud Foundry, OpenShift, Docker, Mesos, uh, obviously Cloudify, uh, around Cloudify, um, and also uh, Datadog itself, uh, the company, the, the product uh, uh, that Elon, uh, I think you're uh, a part of, uh, are not part of OpenStack, but it's still used by OpenStack users. Maybe the right solution is that not every project needs to be done within the OpenStack umbrella. Um, yeah. So sorry, go ahead, Dylan. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I mean, I, I'd agree with that, especially in situ. I mean, most of the most of the projects that you mentioned there, um, they 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 they. they they cross not just OpenStack community, but also a bunch of other, you know, cloud solutions, uh, or 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 just bare metal without without the cloud involved at all. So it's you know it would be I think they, you know, while uh, while a monitoring project like Datadog might fit somewhere within the OpenStack community, and you know of course there there are some monitoring projects that the OpenStack community is generating. Um, it you know it doesn't. It, it makes a lot more. If you want, if you want a tool that's going to work both in your, you know, your in your hybrid cloud environments with Amazon and GC and Azure, in addition to what you're doing with OpenStack, um, you know, you, you, th those projects are likely going to have to come from, you know, from the wider uh, open source community and the wider commercial community, not necessarily within within OpenStack itself. Um, I don't. We draw the line. Where where is the project needs to be part of the OpenStack yeah. Open Tent, and when is that going to be uh, part of the? Broader open source community. Uh, how would you? 
I would say that that's when, you know, I think that comes when uh, if you're part of the, if you're OpenStack specific, and in that, whether that means that you're part, you know, if we see OpenStack as an integration, as an integration engine, as, as you know, Mark and, and the team mentioned during the keynotes at, in Vancouver, then uh, you're, then, then that's where you belong if you're part of that, that piece that's driving the, the coordination between components within OpenStack. Um, if you're running on top of it or if you're running or if you're something that interacts with a bunch of other uh, cloud and infrastructure management solutions, then, then you, then you want to sit on the layer above interacting with APIs but not necessarily being part of, uh, part of the OpenStack project itself. Um, I, think we can, I think we can agree a tool that will, you know, for, uh, for orchestrating AWS instances is probably not a fit in, in OpenStack itself, uh, whereas you know something. You know, whereas you know, lo looking at something like Terraform, right? Like they're a great fit. They're going to help you uh, across all of across all of these clouds, um, but they don't necessarily fit within OpenStack directly. Uh, and I, you know, I'd say uh, Datadog is a similar sim similar story with regards to our our monitoring solutions. And uh, Gal, you, you're a contributor to OpenStack. Where would you draw the line? When do you expect a project to be a part of the OpenStack uh, Open Tent or whatever? And when it should be part of the broader open source community. I think the answer uh, also relates to what Bill said uh, earlier, uh, and I totally agree. I think we focus too much on functionality uh, in OpenStack, and since it's such a big project that uh, a lot of companies are working and trying to uh, push their use cases and their different uh, functionality, what we received is so. Uh, complicated, um, so a lot of complicated uh, configurations and a lot of complicated uh, features, uh, which is it makes it it makes it hard to use uh, OpenStack. Uh, I think one of the main problems is that we combined uh, implementations uh, for the various APIs inside OpenStack. I can see it very uh, strong in Neutron. In the networking side, where we are now uh, trying to split between the different uh, uh, projects, I think that OpenStack needs to um, focus on uh, the API level, uh, on the initial uh, goal to make things uh, simple uh, to manage private uh, public clouds. Uh, and, uh, and implementation wise, uh, we should have it uh, separated uh, from OpenStack. Um, I think that the more we see users using OpenStack, we will see these uh, mixed environments where they have uh, users using OpenStack with containers, with Dockers, with Kubernetes, with all sorts of other uh, management, uh, orchestration, and other frameworks, as you said. Uh, we need to to make sure to bridge between these uh, frameworks and not try to um, to bring them to OpenStack. Uh, so I think we need to do more uh, cutting in terms of what we enter to OpenStack because it is it is more it is too much complicated right now and it's only getting worse. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think it, the, the complications getting worse in some ways, uh, and in some ways this is um, uh, obscuring the initial purpose that we set out with uh, for OpenStack. OpenStack has been trying to do everything for everyone, and it is progress has been in some ways painfully slow, and the advent and introduction of containers has outflanked it on one side to an extent. Uh, and people at one side, they will want the choice. Some people will want bare metal, some people will want containers, some people will want open staying instances, whatever. But at the same time, they want simplicity. And, and I think it is um, a, 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 a apocryphal the fact that Microsoft this month has launched the Azure stack. Uh, I mean, and the reality out there is companies are moving to a hybrid environment because volume economics would indicate that workloads and data will eventually migrate to the largest, cheapest platforms possible, and that's public cloud. 
but at the same time there are uh, mitigations around security, provenance, uh, sovereignty, so sovereignty concerns which would favor a more private environment and therefore that is the reason why hybrid is emerging as the, the, the favored option by most corporates and with uh, Azure this month launching or making public the Azure stack you suddenly have what is a single uh, structure where developers can write once and either deploy it to uh, the Azure uh, environment in the public cloud or use the Azure stack with the same deployment um, on a private cloud in a hybrid environment um, and that provides the simplicity that describes a write once use anywhere um, in environment which uh, ever since uh, 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 HP and others withdrew from public sta public uh, cloud, you simply don't have with OpenStack. Um, uh, now, uh, IBM may be a champion, or maybe Oracle that can keep um, OpenStack with a presence in the public cloud. But at this moment in time, the complexity of trying to 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 create these hybrid environments with OpenStack is too great, and it's being outflanked by the moves such as the, the availability of the Azure stack from Microsoft that is making life so much simpler for developers wanting to move in that direction. Interesting. Uh, I'll talk to you once. Yeah, so, uh, so t t actually it's, uh, two questions that put to pop, uh, pop up uh, to my mind uh, following uh, following uh, your statement. So basically, uh, so do you think uh, it's up to uh, the OpenStack Foundation to solve, or at least to to operate uh, to the direction of solving the complexity problem, or do you think it's something the vendors uh, providing a, an enterprise video or or a stable edition uh, build uh, of, of OpenStack? It's up to them uh, to solve uh, the complexity problem, uh, rather focusing on functionality. Obviously, and where you know, having said that, obviously vendors have a lot more uh, more push from their customers to deliver more and more functionality. Uh, and the second part of the question is, do you think it's up uh, for OpenStack to solve the uh, the hybrid slash uh, public cloud uh, scenario and integration to other clouds maybe as well? Do you think it's part of the foundation or part of the, the, the community members to solve uh, that problem? Uh, I, I think in terms of... Uh, I think the complexity needs to be solved by both side, uh, sides. It's not something that can be... Uh, the vendors are basically the ones that are contributing and working on the projects. Uh, the committee itself cannot uh, be the watchdog for everyone, so it's something that we need to do as a community. Uh, for the hybrid, uh, uh, I think that right now, uh, in my opinion, we won't find one solution that can... Um, that can magically combine and solve this uh, problem. It's a problem that needs to be solved uh, both from the OpenStack side and both from a smart, uh, maybe smart uh, orchestration or smart uh, management entities uh, on top of uh, OpenStack and on top of uh, the public clouds. Maybe these top managements could be with the OpenStack API, maybe not. Uh, but I think there are still a lot of missing parts uh, inside OpenStack. For example, uh, a project that I'm involved with uh, spanning networks uh, across clouds, uh, peering networks across, across clouds. So there are still uh, missing components inside OpenStack uh, to enable a hybrid approach. But there is certainly needs to be some sort of uh, orchestration or federation, depending on your model, uh, for the hybrid cloud uh, that connects this all uh, together. So, so question to you, Gal. I mean, you've uh, made a choice to uh, build your project uh, within the OpenStack uh, uh, environment. What did you made that choice? Did you consider doing it elsewhere? Uh, and explicitly decided to go there. What were the considerations for you to make that choice? Uh, I assume you mean a project uh, career. Yes. Um, so career um, creation, uh, the story behind it um, is that uh, I actually met uh, with uh, Anthony Segura Pumadon uh, from Idekura in uh, OpenStack Israel in the last uh, in the last OpenStack Israel day, 
And we actually talked about this problem. We exchanged uh, ideas, uh, and we decided to work on this together. And uh, along the way, uh, while we were working uh, on ideas on our, and on design, uh, we talked with a lot of uh, other companies, with a lot of uh, other deployments, and we found out that this is a pretty common, a pretty common problem that people are trying uh, to solve. Uh, so um, we found out that a lot of people are doing it uh, in a different repositories, in different projects, uh, but trying to accomplish a very common goal of uh, working with containers and uh, with containers orchestration engines within OpenStack uh, mix environments. Uh, so it made sense to make this as an OpenStack uh, project uh, and combine the efforts from all of these companies and people. Uh, and I think that the problem we are trying to solve is a critical problem for OpenStack um, because, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to see more and more of these uh, mixed environments, especially with containers and containers uh, frameworks and orchestration engines. And uh, career mission uh, is basically to simplify uh, management and orchestration of this by uh, basically reusing what we have right now in terms of networking in OpenStack already in Neutron and using this flexibility for containers uh, networking, so I think the end goal of career is actually to simplify uh, setups, uh, and we talked about how important it is to simplify things in uh, OpenStack. Yeah, and uh, does it? Uh, what do you think about Magnum in that context? Well, um, I, I'm I'm not part of the Magnum team, so I'm, I'm I spend a lot of time talking uh, both with uh, Adrian and. Uh, Danion from the networking part in Magnum. Uh, we talked a lot about career and how it fits in Magnum. Uh, I think that the main goal of Magnum is to expose APIs uh, to manage and make containers, orchestration engines, first class uh, citizens in OpenStack. Uh, so you have a common API to manage this environment. Uh, and I think career is. Um, is quite different in this approach. So we are trying, uh, instead of you know, uh, saying, OK, we bring these, all of these environments, Kubernetes and uh, Docker Swarm and Mesos and uh, all of these environments that people are using to deploy containers as is to OpenStack, uh, instead of doing this, we are trying to bring them while using things that we have in OpenStack, like the networking and simplifying the way uh, that we manage, uh, orchestrate, uh, operate, and also perform in these mixed environments. Um, so we bring OpenStack richness, I think, to, uh, or this is at least the goal, to a uh, container world. Um, and we are right now working on modeling and integrating Kubernetes. Uh, and as I said, the end goal is to uh, simplify these environments to leverage uh, as much components in OpenStack uh, instead of using a lot of new uh, and less mature solutions uh, that are coming uh, for the containers world. So in terms of relationship, I see Magnum as a user of a career. Uh, and I think that the goal for both uh, communities is to make career the default uh, networking driver for uh, Magnum. So, uh, Bill, do you think that uh, containers will help to solve some of that complexity that you mentioned in OpenStack? And, uh, I, I, I think that containers could be the salvation for OpenStack. Um, uh, containers could provide an environment where uh, you can allow uh, individual companies to work on different containers, to work on different innovations, to using the con container model to bring it all together with the, the, the basic OpenStack functionality providing the management and orchestration to, to, to coordinate all of it. And you also then have the right ones use anywhere functionality with containers to have the portability between, between uh, a public and private environments to have 
have the best of both worlds in, in, the, in the, the hybrid solution. Um, so uh, if um, OpenStack can uh, adopt and integrate uh, containers effectively, then containers could be OpenStack salvation. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, just one last question on, on that regard. Why haven't we seen too many public clouds provider of OpenStack? I mean, we are working, for example, with data center and uh, I know that Muranti said some portion of that IBM uh, do something about it, uh, about public cloud. Why are we not seeing more of that uh, in your view? I, I, I think IBM uh, uh, stand out as uh, uh, a champion that have, uh, have stayed the course and, and, and are still uh, uh, keeping pace with the, with the major cloud players. I think Oracle uh, are also uh, a major challenger. If Oracle are to be believed in terms of their ambitions uh, and their investment in cloud, uh, then they will be a key organization to work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, both of these organizations have almost been hindered by the progress made by OpenStack in terms of uh, 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 taking their, their um, hybrid uh, 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 offerings forward. Uh, they just had to wait for the OpenStack uh, uh, community to, to mature. Um, and I, I think uh, Azure and AWS left the station and, and have uh, achieved an enormous lead there. So uh, I don't think necessarily uh, that in reality there will be a massive OpenStack public cloud champion. But if, you're, if you've got a, a containerized environment where you can have the portability using containers between any environment, that becomes less of an issue. I see. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm actually seeing more, um, uh, I think that OpenStack uh, is now in, uh, in the stage where it matured enough to start becoming a solution for public clouds. Uh, and I actually uh, think that we are going to see more uh, offerings uh, on that, in that uh, front uh, pretty soon. I think it's the, the one, two years uh, from now are a critical point to OpenStack. Uh, it's starting to get deployed uh, seriously in production. And I think it's a testing period right now if it could uh, uh, fit. I see. Uh, so I think uh, if I kind of conclude uh, the comments here, um, and uh, we want to conclude the, the discussion here, uh, I think we, we mentioned a couple of things here. One of them is that we're in, in one end, we're seeing a democratization of OpenStack with the initiatives like uh, uh, OpenTent, uh, that in itself uh, lead to more diversity on one hand and more options, but at the same time, uh, it does create more complexity. Uh, there are a couple of things that OpenStack is trying to do to actually overcome that. Uh, one of them is uh, through the marketplace. The other one is the distro themselves taking responsibility for you know packaging the right tools that are mature and deliver the, uh, deliver uh, you know uh, an OpenStack with an SLA attached to that. Um, Bill mentioned the fact that uh, uh, we're, uh, that containers could be uh, a way to uh, solve some of that complexity because it does provide a common ground uh, in which a lot of the tools can work with and that, that in itself would make the use of them easier rather than uh, seeing too many options on how to configure them and set them up. Uh, the reason why uh, we're starting to see some portion of public cloud, I do agree with Bill that uh, the public cloud, the lack of public cloud, uh, or at least at, at massive scale, is a, is a big inhibitor. And, and uh, IBM with Blue Box and the other things that I think is starting to pile up uh, may be a, a, a solution for that. So I'm hoping that uh, um, that in itself would change because uh, obviously. Uh, having a public cloud, an OpenStack public cloud, uh, is by far the, the easiest way to use OpenStack. Uh, and I think that's uh, the other part that uh, I think uh, we've touched on. Uh, both, I think, uh, Gal and Ilan talked about uh, the choices uh, of uh, making a project within OpenStack. And, and so I think if I try to categorize that, and Arthur uh, helped me there, I think that what we're basically saying, if, if the project itself is natively integrated with OpenStack, uh, like in the case of uh, Courier and uh, obviously Magnum and 
and uh, Neutron and others, uh, then um, then it needs to belong to OpenStack. And uh, if it's more generic, if it touches the application but needs to be more portable, like Datadog, Cloudify, and others, uh, then it probably needs to be uh, within the uh, broader open source community. A project like Magnum, uh, I think, does a, a good job on bridging between the native OpenStack project that are built for OpenStack and the outside world. So I think it's an interesting approach uh, not to create yet another, if you like, container orchestration, but rather than creating just a gluing mechanism uh, to bring whatever is available on the open uh, source community into OpenStack. In that case, <coughs> yeah, we're not creating yet another uh, OpenStack native alternative, but we're leveraging the broader open source community, but in a more native OpenStack way. So we kind of uh, gain mm -hmm. uh, the benefit of both worlds. Uh, other than that, are there uh, any concluding remarks, tips uh, that each one of you want to uh, mention for users who are considering to contribute to OpenStack, use OpenStack, etc.? So let's start with Ilan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think my, 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 my closing comments are actually probably more for the OpenStack community rather than for the users. I think, uh, you know, as, as the vendors and, and developers of the project, we need to find ways to improve the, the onboarding process for for new administrators, for new users, for new developers. I think for somebody coming from outside of the community, it's it's still a bit of a challenge on where, where do you get started? What do I, you know, what 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 pieces do I grab and who do I speak with if I want to run a cluster myself? Um, what are the best practices around monitoring that? Um, you know, that's something that the Datadog team has been trying to help, uh, help, help, help document and help put out there. Um, and, you know, as a, as a developer, you know, I want to I want to squash my first bug. You know, what's what's the best way to get started there? Um, and I, just offering those on ramps in, I think, is going to help get, you know, not that there's a not that there's a lack of companies with interest in working in OpenStack. But I mean, help, you know, helping individual contributors be more productive from the start just means that we're going to improve some of that velocity that that Bill and others had you know commented on earlier. Yep. So let's go with that now. Uh, I think um, my experience is that uh, for first-time uh, contributors or uh, new contributors, uh, the way that OpenStack uh, run things can be a little bit uh, complicated, a little bit uh, intimidating at start. Uh, but I think uh, open source work is uh, a lot more uh, rewarding uh, to me uh, than other work that I have done. Um, I think that uh, it takes time to get used to it and it's sometimes a bit uh, slow, uh, but it's something that you learn over time and I want to see more uh, new people coming and helping and uh, discussing. Uh, I think a critical point and I think the OpenStack uh, Foundation and all the committees are doing it uh, are starting to do it quite good is uh, leveraging and understanding feedbacks from the operators, from the actual users, uh, and applying uh, their correct uh, priorities and uh, pushing for the, uh, the features that are most uh, missing and are most needed by our operators uh, because uh, we build OpenStack uh, for them in the end goal. So I want to see this uh, increasing. Um, and that's it. Thanks. Thanks very much, Carl. Uh, Bill? Yeah, I, I think I, I think OpenStack has a positive future. I think uh, things are coming together now as OpenStack matures, as ca containers uh, provide a way forward uh, for some of the the things that OpenStack is seeking to achieve. Uh, um, and as as uh, uh, with the, the Blue Box acquisition and other things that IBM are doing, and uh, the announcement by Oracle of the massive investment that it's making, um, I still there's a, there's a positive future. Uh, there have been some hiccups along the way. The 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 the, the slow progress it's made to reach uh, uh, um, enterprise readiness. Um, uh, the some of the the missed uh, uh, opportunities for by HP and others. 
but I think there's a positive future out there. But unfortunately, this isn't happening in a vacuum. Um, the, uh, the, uh, when we were out in Tokyo, we saw that um, the OpenStack community was growing at about 35%. And we've just seen uh, results from uh, 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 AWS, which is growing at 70%. And uh, I, although the, the Microsoft figures are a little bit opaque, it, uh, there are some figures pr uh, suggesting it could be growing as fast as 140%. Um, so you, you just need to, to realize that much of the market is moving ahead. Um, and that um, uh, uh, OpenStack is, is actually getting things together a lot better than it has and I think it does have a place and it does have a future um, but it, it, it needs to actually accelerate if it's to keep up. Excellent. Uh, Arthur? Yeah, so I you know, definitely echo the, the need for a OpenStack made simpler. Uh, we, I think we've been talking about complexity with OpenStack for, for quite a while now, and I was really happy to see, you know, the advancement uh, we made in that area in the Tokyo Summit. You know, definitely we've seen a lot, we've seen less announcements and more and more uh, stability and civilization of, of, of uh, existing projects, making sure they're easily, more easily usable, etc. Uh, and definitely happy to see you know the democratization of, of, of uh, the the, uh, the various projects. I think uh, I think uh, this allows innovation uh, within OpenStack itself. Obviously, a lot of innovation around around the containers, which could be you know the way uh, OpenStack would would, would be made uh, simpler. Uh, this is uh, like the, the the first area I think that would uh, make it make things easier, but also you know in terms. Of uh, orchestrating the application themselves and making them uh, more portable around uh, around OpenStack, and you know, wouldn't mandate a specific configuration of OpenStack. So, uh, so definitely happy to see that actually taking place. A lot of a new projects uh, are being announced uh, to to make things simpler rather than making things more complex, introducing new uh, you know new and new uh, functionalities. So that's definitely uh, going to the right direction. I'm happy to see that. Excellent. So I think we're uh, ready to wrap up right now. I would like to end with uh, what Gal mentioned. Uh, you could be part of the solution if you want to, and uh, it's intimidating at the first uh, sight, but uh, there is a lot of things moving on, and uh, one of the nice things that I like about OpenStack is the fact that your voice is being heard, unlike uh, if you like the other public clouds or the other uh, dictatorship, as I would call them. Uh, your voice is being heard and you can see it release by release and I would encourage you to be part of the solution rather than just uh, complaining on the problem. Thanks very much all for joining us and uh, thanks for making that uh, uh, seventh uh, podcast uh, very interesting. Talk to you later. And we're planning on having a, another podcast on the ground uh, at Mobile World Congress so keep an eye out for that. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.